guys, in this one we're looking at some assorted proof problems for reliver maths. Let's go. Okay then, first up we want to prove 23 is a prime number. So, lots of ways we can do this. The way I'm going to do it is by thinking about its square root. So, before we think about 23, let's just think about 30. Six. So, 36. We know the square root of 36 is 6. Now, any other factor pairs of 36 work so that 1 is less than 6 and 1 is more. For example, 4 times 9. So we're going to apply that logic to 23. So we know uh, 23 is between 16 and 25. So a root 23 is between 4 and 5. So, if 23 and any factors of 1 would be less than root 23 and 1 would be more. So, we now just need to check that no number less than root 23 goes into 23. So, 23 divided by 4 is 5.75. 23 divided by 3 is 7.6 we're going and 23 divided by 2 is 11.5 so that tells us uh, so therefore 23 has no factors and therefore 23 is prime Next up, the three sides of a right angled triangle are A, B, and C, where A, B, and C are integers. But they state an example where A, B, and C are all even. Alright, so we're thinking Pythagoras. So any multiple of the 3, 4, 5 triangle will work. So we could have A as 6, B as 8, and then C as 10. Alright, and then but B wants us to prove A, B, and C cannot all be odd. So, what we're going to do is let A and B be odd. So, let's say let A and B be odd. So, what we're going to do is 
prove algebraically that this would make c squared even and then c even. So let's say that a is 2x and 1. and b can be 2y and 1. Now we should also say that x and y are integers. Alright, so then a squared is 2x and 1 all squared, so 4x squared and 4x and 1. And b squared is 2y and 1 squared, so 4y squared plus 4y plus 1. So that then tells us that c squared is 4x squared and 4y squared. Add 4x and 4y, add 2. Now that as a common factor of 2, so c squared is even and that tells us that c is even. So then finally that tells us a, b and c cannot all be odd. Next up, if M and N are both irrational and M is not N, then M N is also irrational. Disprove this by means of a counterexample. Alright, so there are a few ways we can think about this. Let's do a few. So let's say M is root. 3. And so then we would need to multiply that by something with a factor of root 3. So we could say that n is 2 root 3. So then M N is root three times two root three. So that's two root three root three. And that is six. And six is rational. Alright, let's do another one. So, we can have m being pi. Alright, 
Alright, so another way we can cancel irrationality is by using fractions. So I can say n is 1 over pi. So then mn is pi over pi. And that is just 1. And again, 1 is rational. So therefore, mn is rational. So there are two counterexamples to the statement. Next up. Given that a is greater than b is greater than 0, and that a and b satisfy log a minus log b is equal to log a minus b, show that a is b squared over b minus 1. Alright, so on the left, by the rules of logs, and uh, the left is log a over b. And then on the right is equal to log a minus b. Alright, now for this to be true, the insides of the logs must be equal. So a over b is equal to uh, a minus b. Alright, now multiply through by b and we get a is a b minus b squared and then we can add b squared and subtract a from both sides so b squared is a b minus a Alright, now on the right we can factorize so b squared is a lots of b minus 1 and then divide through by b minus 1. So therefore uh, b squared over b minus 1 is indeed equal to a. Alright, and then we want to write down the full restriction on the value of b, giving a reason for your answer. Alright, so we know that a must be greater than zero. Now, the part that determines the sign of a is b minus 1. b squared is always positive. So, this tells us that b minus 1 must be greater than Zero. And that tells us that B must be greater than one. So 
Sir, that is a restriction on B, and the reason is that A must be greater than zero, which wouldn't work if B was one or less.